not high tech. And so that's the idea of like, I wanted something like very elementary, stamp collecting, and what it's almost like math, but it's not. So we think of having like math, but like basic. So that's, that's, that was the idea with it, 40 hours. Yeah. Get a cookie. Mm -hmm. Luckily, I can't leave this area. <laughs> 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 Hi, my name is Angel Artig. I am an artist in, uh, based in Houston, Texas. Uh, this is my exhibition, uh, La Ciencia Avanza Pero Yo No, Science Advances But I Do Not, at G-Spot Gallery in the Houston Heights. The two big kinds of rabbit, you can see how it's all coalesced here. Yeah. 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 And here it is. I can I just let it air dry and then and then I just store it. And then in turn here it has one. So when I air dry it in room temperature, the, the structure of the molecule itself for, uh, before it disintegrates and room temperature takes up to five hundred years. If you freeze it or in room temperature that's freezing, uh, it'll take more like up to a million years before it completely just Disintegrates, but that's the thing: is that is it important if it disintegrates or not? Because you know, I uh, that's I don't know. I really don't know. You know, strawberries are very distracting to too. Yeah. It's like, it's strawberry and bananas that are easy to extract from. So this is rubbing alcohol. This precipitates the bleeding to the surface. So see that layer there? There's an alcohol layer. So, see those bubbles that are bubbling up? Yeah. Those are the strands that are just being collected. So, it'll take like probably like two minutes before it clumps up and I just take it that way. But you could have one of those today. Thank you. And here's the sound. Uh -huh. Well, the reason why I use a lot of clay in the work is because when you think of when you introduce scientific methods, it's very like high tech, and then clay is very like caveman. So I want that idea of like clashing those two things together, the clay and the um, deprocess itself. Yeah, you're welcome. Oh. Yeah, I kind of keep tabs. Sometimes I mix two people in one vial, but that a lot depends because in less cases I'm not labeling them. Um, I'm not labeling them with their names or their their age or their sex, so um, I could play with, with that idea a little bit more, and mixing and you know, and you know, it's just kind of. Because I'm not follow, it's not following the the labeling of it. Yeah. Wonderful. Oh yeah. How did you do that? Well, I mainly surround that. You sir? Yeah. So this is a ceramic abacus. It contains some of the uh, DNA that I've uh, collected from the sub scientist booths. Mm. Um, so. All of these are participants that I that have participated in the booths. Um, 
I don't label the the vials or the or the substances that I collect, um, and so they're sort of anonymous. And so I wanted to present this to the public in some kind of way that it's still kind of like a tally mark um, to to the substances that I collect from the booth. So one of the simple ideas that I had is making it as an abacus, because when you think of abacus, they're very simple, sort of uh, mathematical tools, very like very ancient like. Um, and I wanted to have that that idea of tally marking um, body substances. Some of these ha contain more than one person because since I'm not labeling them or categorizing them in any sort of modern scientific language. Um, I, I, I play with mixing the, the substances together, so some of them contain more than one person um, in, in the vial tubes. So it's sort of like a collection of the, of the substances that I've uh, collected through, through the booths. Wow, that's really interesting. Uh, the, the, the ceramic um, is sort of this idea of like, be, the tubes themselves are very modern, they're very plastic, and inside is the fleshy, uh, DNA substance um, and and the ceramic piece is kind of this idea of, of this ancient um, substance that's sort of always been here so the ceramic is kind of uh, tells that story when you think of ceramics it's very ancient material like almost very caveman and I wanted it to look like it was dug out and so that's why it looks very um, and when you think of clay it, it's very it's all like it, clay is like death. It's, it's all the decomposition of all the organic material. And so for me, clay is very interesting um, because it comes from the earth. And so it's like it, it has this decomposition to it. Um, the flesh is sort of this preservation of bodies, another type of it. So I, I don't call it mummification because mummification has a different process. But it, it sort of follows that same pattern of preserving a uh, preserving flesh in that kind of way. Very nice, man. It kind of reminds me a little bit of the Aztecs or some of the Mayan, you know. Uh, yeah, the the Zopanli, it, 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 it has that it, it has the visual language of a, of, of the Zopanli, which the the skull heads. Um, but the the skull heads for me, it's more of the the play on clay. Gotcha. That the idea of of, of death, what is the dying body? Because right now, all the flesh that's inside these tubes, um, all the people that ha that I've extracted this from are alive today. Um, but what about 500 years or a thousand years from now? Um, those those bodies will. I mean, I have no idea of scientific technology, of course. But what if one of those bodies dies and and that preservation of this flesh is still here um and and that's for me that sort of body and death kind of gotcha so you got a little time capsule going here something like this yes uh -huh. with the booth is that you um i embody a sort of scientist um character person um, that's a persona in this particular show yeah oh, even though, transfer to the next one um it's it, t it changes yeah the booth changes the idea is that i have to be constricted so I sort of write, I, I've written about the booth a couple of times, um, and um, so, that's my phone, sorry. <laughs> um, the booth, uh, uh, the idea is that the scientist has to be constricted, um, and that's why it's called the sub-scientist booth, because the scientist has to be submissive to the public. And so it could be any type of construction, it could be sometimes um, I wear a, a choke collar that's uh, chained to the wall mm -hmm. sometimes. It, it, dif it, it differs. This time it's uh, these rosary chains that, are, that were connected onto my arms and legs. Um, when you were in this costume here? It, not that costume. <laughs> Does this character have a name? No, it, they don't have a name. But it's just... Yeah. Um, this is... Can you... Uh, Raza Sin X... Yeah. Is that the yeah. Espanol scene? Yes, it is Spanish. It, it's a sort of play on a Mexican philosopher um, from uh, sort of like a Mexican modern modernist literature. Uh, he's a poet, Jose Vasconcelos. He wrote a, uh, a very 
um, impacting um, um, literature on, on, on sort of uh, Latin Americans and mm -hmm. what does the word raza, which race, it translates from. And for me, the word, for, that word has been kind of interesting um, for me because it has a, it's, it's a different meaning than its English partner. And so I wanted to use the Spanish um, raza and, and sort of superimpose it on something that is very scientific. And I wanted to see how, how that looks like um, in, in this sort of context mm -hmm. that, I, that, I, that I'm using it. Um, you know, I know a little bit about art, and it's like you said, it's not theater, you're not specifically performance art, even though yeah. you put that into this, this thing. Would it be fair to call you a dataist? You think of yourself as a data? Uh, yeah, I use some of like, some kind of data elements That's kind of, to it. That, yeah. that makes sense, kind of the first thing I saw. When I, and then I also noticed that you have your gear hanging on the wall, like that's the coat that you're wearing in this portrait here, and then I notice over there there's another chest plate and a piece of gear over here. What is this here that I'm looking at? That is a molecule crown. It's ceramic. Um, it's, it's a sort of... There, a lot of the work has a lot to do with religion, or there's a lot of religious aspects that I mm -hmm. take from it. Um, science, of course, like pop science, actually. Um, and the the crown is, is sort of like this play on like this sort of uh, Jesus uh, DNA. So kind of, of a scientific crown of thorns. Yeah, mm -hmm, exactly. Okay. Yeah, um, I don't use it like a sort of Jesus crown, thorn of crowns. Um, it's it has a different kind of. I mean, I wear it in, in photographs. Um, this character I did wears it in photographs, kind of like a sort of a anime looking um, um, character but um, a lot of the pieces that I that the character wears like the coats and the um, ceramic necklace abacus they're all kind of part of the work so it was interesting to like even exhibit those pieces because they're like props like everything's kind of like props to the work um, the real work is the interaction with the public for me um, that's more of the the realness for me. The, the rest cool. is just props. Very cool.